Hello, this is Teacher April or Teacher Apps from JB Perillos National High School. I'm glad to have you in my class. Welcome to our class for today. And this is Grade 9 Science, Week 1 to 2, Respiratory Circulatory System, Working with Other Organ Systems. Please prepare your pen, paper, and module. We are going to start this lesson, so please find a comfortable place for you to listen and watch. Okay? That's great. Let's go! This time, let's try to know more about the different parts of the human respiratory system. Now, what is the role of the respiratory system inside our body? Or to us, living things? The main purpose of the human respiratory system is to Yes, to exchange gases and also to breathe in and breathe out. This is the process of what we call respiration. Respiration is the process of breathing in and breathing out, meaning the taking of oxygen and taking off of carbon dioxide. The first part in a human respiratory system, remember we have two passageways for the air to enter. We have the nose and the mouth. If in case we have colds or runny nose, then we can breathe using our mouth. And if we have no runny nose, of course, we usually use our nose to breathe in or air. As the air enters through our nose, it goes directly to our nasal cavity. In this part, in the nasal cavity, the air is moistened, filtered, and warmed so that when it enters right through our pharynx, it is already cleansed or somehow cleaned. What about if the air enters through our mouth? Is it not filtered? In that case, we have also tiny particles inside our throat, inside the pharynx. In the pharynx, it is filtered somehow, partially. If there are some unnecessary filtration that is happening through our nose, then the pharynx can also do its job. Alright, so if the air enters and what if there's food? Remember that in your pharynx or throat, it has two tubes. It is for the food and for the air. By that time, the one that controls the passageway for food and for air is what you call your epiglottis. Your epiglottis is the one that flaps open and closes when it enters a food and or air. It is voluntary contraction or movement inside the muscles where it allows the food to enter through the esophagus and for the air to enter in the larynx going to the trachea. Now, as the air enters through our larynx or what you call your voice box, our larynx contains, also for voice, they have the Adam's apple here. The modulation of our voices in speech and regulation of this is controlled by our larynx. By that time, boys can have deeper voices and girls can mature to high tones or high pitch of voices. After the air enters through our larynx, this time, the air enters through our trachea. Now, the air enters through the main passageway going to the lungs, and this is what you call your trachea. As the air enters through the trachea, it goes to the two main tubes inside the lungs. These two main tubes is what you call bronchi, but if it is only one tube, it is called bronchus. Bronchi for plural, bronchus for singular. Once it enters through our bronchi, now the air will enter through different tiny branches from the bronchi. These tiny branches are what you call bronchioles. They are attached to the main branch, of which is your bronchi, and from the bronchioles, there are what you call tiny little sacs that filters the air. These sacs are what you call your alveoli sacs. Your alveoli sacs are the ones that regulates the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your body. It also allows the circulation of 
the air inside our body. In this way, the process of respiration is happening. But in a case of a COVID-19 patient, for some people who are experiencing viral or bacterial infections like COVID-19, pneumonia, or tuberculosis, they have different cases for this. What happens to their alveolar sacs is that it is blocked by phlegm. Yes, you heard it right. These phlegms are caused by the infection or inflammation inside the lungs. If there's too much infection inside the lungs, it creates coagulation or blockage of the exchange of gases inside the alveolar sacs. So, by that time, there could be a hindrance for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. That is why it is hard for some patients to breathe in and breathe out air. And that may lead to complication or if not, death. After the air enters through our different portions, please notice that we have also what we call the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the one that supports the lungs inside our body. It is also the one that controls our breathing process. It may expand or it may contract. When we breathe in air, this diaphragm expands. And if we exhale, this diaphragm contracts. So remember, when we breathe in air, our ribs goes upward. Or somehow it expands. Same with our lungs. And same with our diaphragm. If we exhale, then our lungs will contract. Same with our diaphragm. And our ribs will also do the same. Here is the best example for you to understand the breathing mechanism of the human respiratory system. Here is a video on an experiment about the human respiratory system. Let's check it out. analysis about this diagram. This is a signage that talks about the COVID-19 signs and symptoms and how does COVID-19 affect our respiratory system. Knowing that you already know the breathing process or the breathing mechanism, the parts and functions of the respiratory system, I think it's time for you to learn more about how COVID-19 affects our respiratory system. You can write your answers in your module or in your paper. Remember, there's always a little scientist inside you. That's it for today. Bye!